thank you for joining us today. I'm Kim Ayala, retired director of the Undergraduate Undeclared Advising Office in the Division of Undergraduate Education and a member of the organizing committee who has the honor of introducing our program today. First of all, apologies for any technical dif difficulties you may encounter today as we navigate this format. We want to acknowledge the chancellor and the committee who make these presentations possible. What Matters to Me and Why started in 2012 and has now blossomed to include an alumni series and a medical school series. Be sure to check out these exciting opportunities on our website. And now for a few housekeeping announcements. Next month on February 16th, Professor Roxy Silver will be our speaker and you can check out the details on our website. This talk is being recorded and will be available soon on our website. We invite you to keep your video on throughout the talk. We will have evaluations at the very end of the talk, and we really appreciate it if you take the time to fill them out. We are also eager to hear from you about ideas for future speakers for the series. For those of you attending, for, for those of you attending your first event, we want you to know you are in for a unique experience. Speakers are asked simply and authentically to answer the question, what matters to you and why? And take that wherever it goes. The series provides a forum for speakers to talk about values, beliefs, and motivations, and their personal experiences as they have encountered them along the way. The hope is to strengthen bonds between faculty, students, and staff who teach, learn, and work here, and celebrate both the diversity of this community and the commonalities that bind us together. At the end of the talk, there's ample time for a Q&A with the audience. We will soon hear from Dean Ramin Talesh, who will introduce our speaker, Director Neda Moya Yeti. What matters to me and why has a tradition before COVID, we would take a couple of minutes to turn to the person sitting next to you and introduce yourself. Well, we are currently not in person, but want to continue this tradition by the magic of technology and the use of breakout rooms. So in a minute, we are going to transport you to a breakout room where we ask you to just introduce yourself and where you're based at UCI. And then we will return to the larger group to start our presentation. Will Alvarez is our technology wizard and will magically take us away. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Ramin Talesh, the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Student Life and Leadership and Dean of Students. And I have the privilege of introducing Neda here today. So everybody loves Neda. I'm just gonna start with that. Uh, I'm gonna give a few sentences in terms of her bio and then uh, introduce her. So. Neda Moayedi is, is an educator, a leadership coach, a mentor, an advocate. Her personal mission is written in the bio, is to encourage others to realize and celebrate their potential within and to break down the barriers they may encounter on the journey to achieving their dreams. She has extensive experience in career coaching, teaching career courses, professional development workshops. She also tries to infuse mindfulness in, and meditation practice into her uh, classroom, as well as her coaching sessions. Uh, everybody loves Neta. She got her uh, bachelor's degree in so here in psychology and social behavior at UC Irvine in the School of Social Ecology. Her master's degree is in leadership studies uh, in higher education specialization at the University of San Diego. And um, she is currently the director of the Sage Scholars Program. Prior to that, she worked in the Division of Career Pathways and Career Services, and uh, she returned back to UC Irvine in 2015 in a professional capacity. Um, everybody loves Netta. And so with that, I would say that, you know, a few years back, um, I had this idea of creating an Iranian American Faculty Staff Association, and I needed to bring people together. And so I went to Netta's office and I sat down and I said, hey, I have this idea. I want to get it off the ground. I need help. I need somebody to partner with. And Netta was like, let's do this. And so she uh, kind of led the way uh, and, and helped and, and we became partners in making this uh, kind of come to fruition. 
She since then has gone on to even chair the Iranian American Alumni Association uh, chapter here at UC Irvine. She's a very proud uh, anteater. And she's, like I said, brings people together and everybody loves Netta. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I talked to about this event and they were like, oh, I love Netta, love Netta. And so I was like, oh, I gotta use that, I think. So with that, I get to introduce Netta Moayedi and uh, please put your emojis together and put them online and welcome her here for this Zoom uh, presentation. Thank you so much, Ramin, for the warm welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the emoji love. Um, after that introduction, I really hope I don't let you down, right? Let's hope this doesn't suck. But um, it's just so wonderful to see so many familiar faces. I see my students. I see incredible colleagues. Um, and there's some new faces. So for those of you that don't know me, I really look forward um, to sharing my story and getting to know you. But um, I'm just so excited to be here. And I'm flipping through the pages. And there's folks that I haven't seen that I would normally see at this event. Um, so this has been something that um, has been near and dear to my heart, but thank you, Ramin. Thank you, the entire planning committee for inviting me to share the space with you today. Um, I'm so honored and humbled to be here. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of the series. I've always been in the audience. Um, I don't just come for the Subway sandwiches and I know we all joke about that, but um, it really does give us just a chance to come together and connect on a deeper level to strengthen our community and um, foster that sense of belonging. So I'm really, really excited to be here with you today, um, especially the students. So, yay, sagers are in the house. Sagers are in the house. Um, but what a wonderful question, right? What matters to me and why seems simple, but as I've sat in the audience, I never thought it was easy, but it's really difficult to answer because there's so many different things um, that come up for me. And as I reflected and what I wanted to share um, so much, right? But we only have a finite amount of time and I, I, I wanna honor our time together. So, but what kept coming up was this common thread again and again, which was the importance of our connections and our relationships, especially right now. Um, really nurturing those real connections, right? Our, uh, nurturing our collective wisdom and our collective experience um, and how much we need each other. Like we really need each other to be able to cultivate the courage to um, embrace the unknown. So, um, you know, I love UCI. Realizing what we do here and how we show up really matters for each other, for our students. And um, it's really the quality of our relationships to ourselves and others that's so important um, in these times. And I think something that resonates for me is, um, <clears throat> you know, thinking about, um, what am I trying to say here? You know, when, when we say our relationships matter, it's like we get so caught up in like, we don't need to change the whole world, but we do have the power to positively impact and reshape the world that's within our reach, right? So this space right here. Um, so I am really excited to share this space with you. And again, those who know me um, already know I'm an open book. So in a little bit, when it's time for Q&A, I welcome your questions. I welcome your comments and feedback. So let's have a conversation. Um, but I do, I want to start by emphasizing the importance of making meaning during these challenging times and to reflect on our experience in order for us to find our joy, find our purpose, despite the darkness that's out there, right? Like, um, they always say it's the darkest before the dawn. Oh, well, that would have been a good song anyways, um, to intro to, but in our current uncertain and my God, constantly changing times and environment that we're currently living in, not just because there's a global pandemic or racial injustice, political discord, climate change, a mental health crisis. There's so much going on that I think my message is to really focus on leading with empathy and compassion because that's what's necessary from us right now. Um, and I find that gratitude and resilience and grit are part of the journey. And yet so many of us are pretending that we're not stressed, that we're not anxious as we navigate the unknown. So um, I'm hoping we can all stop pretending and call out positive toxic toxicity as um, positive toxicity. It's the other way around, right? Toxic positivity. Wow. I, and I didn't drink coffee this morning just because of that. But, um, you know, we don't have to have it all figured out, but I do believe that we have to take care of ourselves and each other um, in ways that we haven't been called to do before. So just as a reminder, we're not perfect, nor should we pretend to be. And these challenging times deem, deem it necessary for us to be the best versions of ourselves and um, be the best that we can be. And um, 
you know, I believe right now in embracing um, empathy in more ways than one is the key to authentic connection and more importantly, the impactful and effective leadership. And, you know, another key to leadership development that I always speak to is self-awareness and that willingness to look at all the dark corners and ask for feedback to change, you know, check those blind spots, right? Um, when we ask for feedback, it's not always easy to receive, but that's how we get better, right? It's, it's, um, that's the real work. I always say, do your work. That's the real work. And um, as Ramin had mentioned, this is why my overall approach to teaching and learning, it's rooted in strength-based leadership philosophy, because I, I want to identify the individual strengths that we all carry. Um, I also like to infuse mindfulness and awareness practice into the curriculum, into our classroom and coaching sessions, um, not just because I believe it's an essential life skill, and not just because you're trying to get a job or a leadership role, but it's it's in order for us to thrive in life is that willingness to really um, put the lens on ourselves. So um, I hope as I share with you, you realize that my story is really about navigating life through um, adaptability and motion for all my students that hear me say that all day long um, and allowing each aha or defining moment to guide my path forward in, in my purpose. And, you know, Another thing is you are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And this has been my motto for, um, for my journey as, as I'm getting down or even when things suck, I try to remind myself I'm still supposed to be here. Um, and that and Bob and Weave. Bob and Weave is the other one that gets me going. But um, I'd like to share a little bit about how my adversities shaped me into the person I am today and how that Bob and Weave mentality um, led me to finding that groove and adaptability in motion. And I really appreciate those of you that have your cameras on because I feel like I'm talking to the room and that makes me feel good. So thank you for being here. Um, but, you know, the, the lessons that I've learned along the way that have shaped the what matters to me and why um, really make me, I love this imperfect life. My gosh, it's so imperfect. But my family is really important to me. And that includes my mom and my dad and my brother. Yes. But um, also my friends, my colleagues, the sagers in the audience, you know, there's so many of you in the audience. And I feel incredibly lucky to say that um, I have amazing friends and family that I've made it through this life's uh, ups and downs and the twists and turns and sideways, then you get sucker punched a few times, but I try to do it with love in my heart and um, a smile on my face. And um, some of you know, sometimes I cry in public and that's okay, but I do, I try to live my life with purpose every day. And it brings this work brings real joy to my life. Um, so needless to say, uh, close relationships clearly help me thrive and I wouldn't be here without my tribe. And, um, that's, that's for certain. And um, so, yes, I currently serve as the director of SAGE, and that's how I got here. And I'll share a little bit more about that. Um, I am a proud alum, and I, I didn't realize, you know, I was first-gen non-traditional transfer student, and it's really shaped a lot of my experiences. But even like as Ramin shared, being part of the Iranian American Faculty Staff Association, serving as the president for the Iranian um, alumni chapter, or even being a committee member for our Brilliant Future campaign, I get involved outside of my role because I'm a product of this place, right? I, I give back whenever I can to whatever capacity I'm able to, because that's what fuels my why. Because I really do, so many of you hear me say this, so I can't, I gotta say it again. Right? I believe in the mission and vision of this university. I believe in our commitment to um, equity and diversity, inclusion and access. Like to me, it's not just a like a tagline, it's a daily effort. Um, and I make a daily effort to create a collaborative, safe and inclusive space to foster that sense of belonging and community in order to like, not just uplift my students, but my colleagues, my friends, my, my home life. But um, so that purpose kind of carries me through different places and spaces. But thinking about that purpose is to empower others, empower others to be vulnerable through my own radical transparency and compassion, um, to elevate and help others shine. Like that makes, that just makes my heart so happy when I see other people reach their full potential. And at the end of the day, if you can't be yourself, what's the point? Right. But um, first, I'll, I'll get into how did I even get here? And I do have a few slides um, to share, but I prefer to be able to see your beautiful faces and engage with you. And, you know, if I'm really going off mark, someone's going to give me a signal. Right. So I'd, I'm, I will try to keep the slides to a minimum. But um, I was born in Iran, 
And I, I recall, I, I, I never felt so Iranian until these past couple of years when I really got involved. But my family, my mom, my dad, and my brother, um, we fled during the Iranian revolution. And not to age myself, but that's when we had left Iran. Um, and we landed in Vienna, and which to me was a magical place to grow up in. And um, I always say I grew up in Vienna, even though I was only there from first through fourth grade. And I've clearly spent the majority of my life out here. Um, but like my personality took form, my identity, like just like that feeling of self between those years. And I just say I'm a little bit more mature now. I have a little bit of wisdom to share, but really I say I grew up, my quirks took place at that time. So um, I carry still a lot of that with me. And um, when we came to the States, we landed in um, Connecticut initially, and that's where my aunt and uncle were with my amazing cousins. Um, but we came to America because she, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And now this was the eighties and, um, you know, not quite the same progressive, um, headway we've made in that medical realm. So we uprooted and came to the States and unfortunately, um, she passed within just a few months of us arriving. And so it, it, we were sort of uprooted, have nowhere to go back to, what do we do now? And so we had some family in California and we picked up and moved to California and for the first few years, things seemed okay. I mean, I definitely um, didn't feel like I belonged in California. I didn't quite fit in in the fifth grade, but that's okay. You know, who did? I had a unibrow. It's all right. Um, but really going from there, everything sort of went wrong. Like the you hear so many typical immigrant stories that nothing went according to plan and everything went sideways. And we really um, suffered financially in, in many different ways. And um, so I was 15 going on 16 at the time. And I know that my dad had to go back to Iran. We had to start from scratch kind of um, situation. And so rather than being a, a victim of the circumstance, you know, I, I decided I was going to graduate high school early and I didn't want to be a high school dropout. So I went through independent studies and, I took the equivalencies, right? I would take a subject, I would study, cram, test, test out, study, cram, test, repeat. And I did that through the end of my junior, my junior and senior year. And I managed to finish that, get the diploma in hand, and I started working. Um, and this is where I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, let me see, where is this? And, you know, the thing is, is it's, I realize that all these times it, it really comes down to being a choice, right? And here I have the pictures I have, there's nothing uh, exciting about them, right? There's going to be memes and quotes and things that inspire me as I share with you. But, um, you know, it was really a choice to not be a victim of my circumstances. And I started out doing three jobs, then two jobs and one job. I, I worked in mortgage and restaurant and retail all at the same time. So it really gave me a lot of those transferable skills that I lean on now. So for those students in the audience that think some of those experiences don't um, translate to your professional career, yes, they absolutely do. Um, but, you know, it wasn't until I landed at Triad Financial, I, I was working in finance, not because I loved it, but because it paid the bills, I was able to carry my family financially. Um, and because I was able to not work multiple jobs, I was able to focus and, and sort of rise above in the ranks and, and really embedded myself in that role. Because again, I was thriving because I was, it's all about the work ethic. Right. And I remember my my supervisor at the time, Connie Rapesa, um, this was my first supervisory role. I stepped into this role. I had a staff of 27 folks that I was leading and I was 21 at the time. And she took a chance on me and we were the top performing team and all of that. Those accolades don't mean as much as she showed me what it was like to be a woman in a male dominated field and how I could excel and still be myself. Um, she had high expectations. We always got it done. We always hit goal because she had demanded that excellence. And so that really shaped a lot. And I went on to work at different financial institutions like Wells Fargo and Western Financial. Um, and it wasn't until, um, you know, an illness that derailed everything, or should I say redirected in the best possible way. Um, I was diagnosed with Crohn's and that changed the entire trajectory of my life. Um, but again, rather than scream, 
I was trying to enjoy the ride, right? Noticing that these dif- these difficult moments were leading me somewhere else. And they, it taught me, it taught me to have compassion and to be kind. And Crohn's is really the reason that led me to come back to school, which was something I always wanted to do. And I was able to look around and my, my family was finally okay financially and brother was doing great. Parents are doing great. And it was sort of like my turn to come back to school. And I enrolled in Irvine Valley college. So, um, you know, community college, I'm a proud product of the community college. I had two incredible mentors there. Uh, Michael Cassens, he was teaching intro to, um, let me come back to you, by the way, he was teaching an introductory psychology class and I loved it. He is one of those people that just instills that inspiration and spark in you. And it's because of him, when I transferred to UCI, I sought out Dr. Zinger, who's in the audience. I see you. I'm so happy you're here. Um, But, you know, I believed in myself. Somebody finally believed in me for the first time in my academics. And I went into Dr. Tucker, Carrie Tucker's um, um, honor psychology because I qualified based on the grade I got in Michael Casson's class. And I went in the first day, I didn't understand anything anybody was saying. People were using big words, talking about research. And I was like, clearly I'm not supposed to be in this class. So I got my drop slip and I went up to Dr. Tucker and asked if I could drop the class. And y'all, she like looked me in the eye and she said, no, who says that? Um, and, and I tried to explain like, no, no, this is too advanced for me. I, I don't belong here. I'm good. I just, I'm going to go take a regular class. I'll be fine. And she said, you got to give me two weeks, do the work. And if you still at the end of that, think you can't cut it, then I will consider letting you drop. But until then, n- no, sit back down. And I often channel that because when I know the going gets tough, I can meet my students there. Not that I would push them beyond their belief, but to know I believe in you, right? Um, because I stayed, and you know what? I got my first A plus in that honors class. So um, it's it's people like that that actually helped me discover what a big nerd I actually am. So um, I had the privilege of transferring to UCI and it was between that and Cal State Fullerton. And when I when I got here, I was first gen, I felt miles behind everybody else. I was older than everybody else. Didn't know what Boba was. Why is everyone yelling at me about Boba? But, you know, I was doing my best, but I was still behind. And I realized, and I didn't even realize I was first gen until I got to grad school. So a big shout out to Nick Franco, who was our advisor for our program. And it was a lunch conversation when he helped me discover and identify that. I didn't even realize it, right? So, um, But for me, UCI was not a smooth transition in the least bit. But if I hadn't stumbled, um, I wouldn't have found all the amazing mentors who helped me along the way. They helped me succeed and really let me embrace that. Like, no, you don't know what you don't know. And it's okay to ask. But um, Araceli Rossi was the associate director of um, the Career Center at the time. I I was an undergrad walking around. And I was walking through the student center head hanging low, being like, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. I hate it here. I actually hate it here. Um, And there was this bright light. Hi, are you here for the panel? Uh, And I'm like, no, I'm not here for the panel. I just want to go in my car and cry. Like, why do I want to go sit in a panel right now? And she, I don't even know what happened. It was like, she floated me into that room and I sat in the front and it turned out those career discovery series back in the day, they were called career fest changed my life. And she was like, and when I left, she even stopped me again, made sure I didn't fall through the cracks and said, how did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Come by the career center. And because she did that, I ended up being a peer consultant was that I'll come to that in a second. Um, but it was doing this work where I realized like, wait, what do you all do all day? Like, what degree do I need? I'll be right back. I'm going to do that job. And I did. I went on to grad school, but um, our Sally was a big impact. And another thing that was a blind spot for me where I encourage all my students now in SAGE, like you have to do research, was the director at the time was Saeed Shoker for Europe. And he asked me if I was doing research and I'm like, no, man, I'm just trying to check the boxes and get out of here. What do you mean research? You know? And 
he was adamant that I had to, I'm at an R1 institution and I'm like, what is an R1? What is this guy going on about? Right. But he helped me take away that stigma and that fear of reaching out to um, my professors. And I got the chance to do research with Dr. Sal Maddy and Dr. Joanne Zinger. And I even presented a little poster at Europe. I mean, it was, I, I became embedded in this, in this life. And I realized wait, I, I can do research. I am a researcher. Maybe grad school is for me, right? So I'm um, going back to like, sometimes we don't think how much our work matters, but it really does. And when I left UCI, I had told Araceli to save me an office because I'll be back in May, 2015. Um, and I got it, missed it by a couple months, right? I came back in July of 2015, but I'd gone on to um, University of San Diego initially in clinical psychology and I was going to do clinical counseling. And I quickly realized I was a semester in, I was on the right path, but I was in the wrong car and just being able to switch out. And that's when I was able to meet with my mentors and, and talk through, and I had to reapply from scratch to another graduate program. And all I could think was, I am too old to change my mind. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not about that, right? You want to be able to, um, live out loud. Right. And so that transition itself at the time, didn't make sense, but it brought me to, um, my next mentor, which is Pauline Berryman Powell. Let's see, share screen. And I love this because she is someone who always reminds me, um, that life does not get easier. Right. And that you, you are stronger than, you know, and she allowed me, she, she did life with me. Right. Um, I worked on a variety of projects in the college of arts and sciences. She was the assistant Dean and, um, she gave me so much broad experience, right? I worked on a variety of projects and launched a peer mentor program as part of my action research, but she, she gave me that experience in both academic and student affairs. I could, I was so observant and embedded in so many different things that helped the foundation of my professional career. But most importantly, she gave me the best life advice and to instill in me um, to keep rising and lift others along with you, right? Um, to keep walking that truth. And so um, she's someone who's a mentor and a friend and I, I could not be more grateful to the work that I got to do with her. Um, and oops, wrong way. And then I got to take a class on, um, mindfulness and leadership. And this is probably where, um, I got to be able to really put into practice, like what, what it means to be a mindful leader, um, what it means to have the courage to live out loud and on purpose and to speak and live my truth. Um, Dr. Green really gave me those, um, not that he gave me tools. It's, and not that we really need permission, but he really did. He gave me that permission to be able to stand in my truth. And when I was then, you know, fast forward then to 2015, I'm done, I'm graduating and I've started my new career back at UCI. I've come full circle as a graduate career counselor. And I love seeing my career center family in the audience right now, because I miss you dearly. I miss doing hallway life with you. Um, but it was, the opportunity to work with our really talented masters and PhDs and postdocs on this campus and realizing, Hey, they need support just like everybody else. So I really put my whole self in that experience. And, you know, I love the student piece, but I, I think the lifelong friendships and colleagues that I was able to, to get through that was really um, affirming. Um, and I think that's why we do. I try to say, you know, if you can't be yourself, what's the point, right? But, um, and currently being at the Center for Educational Partnerships, um, Ceci, who's in the audience, is our associate director and my partner in success. Um, you know, there's this trust and open communication for us to co-create. And of course, I, I would be remiss to not mention Dr. Reyes Tuccio, who to me really embodies an equity-minded leader, um, she has trust, there's transparency in our relationship, and that really allows me to do my best work because that allows me to let my best self shine through, right? There's nothing that we can't um, do, do on our own, right? So anyhow, shout out to, to all of that. But I, I do, I, I think it's these mentors and friendships and colleagues along the way because none of us got here alone. I have to honor the impact of others, whether it was small or significant. And it's just really important for us to acknowledge our support system, our mentors, our teachers, and our guides. 
Um, and that's why I always try to name them whenever I can. Right. And, um, you know, I try to remind myself that it's really about love in action. Right. So now this is where my hippie self is going to come through and we're going to talk about love, but I am all in. I love being a journey mate. I love being a collaborator, uh, a mentor, an advocate, but most importantly, I love to tell the truth and it's not always easy, but I'm also a vault. And so many, so many of you in the audience, you know, I have that integrity and respect to, to hold the information in a vault. Um, because I think it's the quality of our relationships that matter. It's not enough just to check the box and, and, you know, have that be there. But um, I do, I just, all of that, when I say I'm all in, I also bring all of that into the work I do with Sage. And so in my role as the director, and for those of you that don't know what Sage is, the Sage Scholars Program stands for Student Achievement Guided by Experience. And it's a two-year leadership professional development program that you know, we, we really focus on designing it so that we can promote those smooth and successful transitions from college to career or college to grad school, right? Really thinking about giving the tools for our students so that they have what they need to thrive once they leave UCI. And, you know, we don't just provide mentoring and leadership training or professional development, but there's also some financial support, but more importantly, it's that, that experience piece, right? The access to relevant and meaningful work experience. So um, in case the sages didn't need to hear it before, but yeah, y'all fuel my why, you are my why. So, um, and when I think about that, that also goes back to the next slide, which this just gives me an image and I carry this with me through and through. And some of you have seen me share this image before, the, the reason I do this work is because you don't know what you don't know, right? And it allows me to be able to connect our scholars to campus and community resources, guide them through their own growth holistically, right? It's not a one size fits all model. So I really make it a point to meet my students face to face um, and, and do that. So I do. I love what I do. I love my students. And I, I love that I get to co-create this transformative program with my partner in success. So I'll shout out to Cecilia Leva Chavez in the audience too. Um, but we do, we have the privilege to walk alongside our students and support them in any way that we can. But I say like, I don't have all the answers, but I will be here with you to figure out that next step and to really instill that abundant mindset versus that deficit mindset, right? I think for me with um, so much of my life experience, my attitude and, and gratitude and positive mindset has been my superpower. And um, I'm just willing to be able to have that difficult dialogue um, to create that safe container for whatever needs to show up for my students. Um, but I, it's a choice, right? We make a choice every single day. I make a choice to lead with love. It doesn't mean I always get it right, but pausing for gratitude throughout the day um, grounds my intentions, I acknowledge the discomfort, and then I, I get to proceed, right? There's so many reminders throughout the day that you're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And that's rooted in love. I mean, I'll show you my mug later. Let's not get sidetracked. But I'm going to show you these pictures. And please don't judge me, y'all. Please don't judge me because this is, this is how it shows up. So um, this picture was taken, my, my brother and a friend of ours, we were down in New Orleans, and this is at about one o'clock in the morning at a little cafe, and this was tucked up to the side. Like, if you didn't look up, you would have missed it. So, you know, when we talk about being present, sometimes you just need to be present to, to capture what it's meant to do. And it speaks to me. And I think that the joy of life is to love. And that doesn't mean that we have to be um, restrictive and not bring that with us to our personal lives, our home lives, our work life, like it, it feeds everything, right? But when I tell you I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing, it's because um, it just takes a simple shift because love is really all around us, right? Um, and, and to notice it, it just takes a simple shift in perspective. And for me, leading with love, living with love, lifting others up in love, is, is really important to me because we're doing life together. We're not just working on a project or um, a task. We're, we're in collaboration with each other, right? And all I can do is model the way through that compassion and understanding and forgiveness. But y'all, those are potato chips. Like, how can I not pause to acknowledge that that is a heart, right? Like, 
Yes. In that moment, remember love, love is here. Love lives here. Um, these other photos I've shared these, I want you to look at this top right here. I didn't put those sandwich in a heart shape. That's how it came to me. Right. Or looking at the potato and my favorite is this mojito in the middle, the mint leaf sh shows me love. Right. Um, but it's, it's all joking aside, it allows me these constant reminders throughout the day and the hustle and bustle come back to love, right? Um, the picture on the right here was during our break. Why did it rain? Our only break we got all year and it was raining the whole time. But instead of being sad about it, look at the beautiful heart that comes in the cloud, right? It's there. Or the salad dressing that I'm about to throw away. I didn't create that heart. That's, that was just chilling there. So, um, you know, it's just a good reminder. And I, and I do, I'm a nerd and I do this out loud because the next slide, and I'm so happy this person is here today and I'm not going to put you on the spot. I've blocked out your name, so don't worry. But it was earlier this year I, and this person's already graduated and it was a really tough week. Ceci and I were pushing through some deadlines and we both get this, this text of a picture of his food and he says, I'm exactly where I need to be. Right. And it all like, it's not the point, but it's in that moment. Can we try to like put these um, lessons and ideas out there so that we can actually be connected to do this work and love. And um, this means more to me than any of the other pictures I've showed you, because it's, it reminds me that we're not meant to go at it alone. We're in this together. And when I see this, it reminds me that my students go like, their identity isn't just their GPA or the research they're doing here at UCI. It's about giving them the tools they need to be able to succeed beyond UCI. So I love you for being here and seeing that. It's a good thing I didn't call you out because you know I normally would have. And so just a quick reminder uh, to find your own magic, right? I'm not suggesting you start finding hearts everywhere, but if you do, please text them to me. I love that stuff. Um, but really thinking about getting out of your own comfort zone you know, having difficult dialogues with compassion and understanding and kindness, and especially with non-judgment, that's, that's uncomfortable. So getting out of our comfort zone, you would be surprised how much magic you'll actually create in your life. And, you know, I think forgiveness is another really important piece of our leadership practices. I think that when I think about, um, when I think about the, the work that we do, um, an example that comes, I'm also a caretaker for my mom and I definitely don't get it right most days, but I know I'm doing my best so that it's so easy to forgive other people, but that work to forgive ourselves is really, really important. And um, in that forgiveness to really cultivate that kindness, right? Cultivate that kindness towards not just others, but ourselves too. And I recognize that like, you know, we're here to make a difference, to create these positive ripple effects because it's not about our individual ambitions, but about how we build something greater together, right? We're radiating love and this moment is bigger than, than we are. And so I will, end, like, here's this, you know, radiate love. That's my action to you. When you're having a difficult dialogue, when you're having a difficult day, can you come from a place of love? Um, because life goes fast and we have to practice limitless love, right? I don't call it unconditional love because there's conditions everywhere, but Love is limitless. And so is joy. And so is gratitude. And so, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, realizing what we do and how we show up really matters. Um, the connections, the quality of our connections and our relationships. Um, but at the end of the day, you matter to me, you and the audience, if we're already connected, I hope you know how much I love you and how lucky I feel to do this life with you. And if this is our first time meeting today, something that resonated for you, if anything that resonated with you, feel free to contact me. I welcome you to connect with me and let's chat about it. But um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and this gift to pause and just reflect um, on what matters to me and why. And I just hope it allows us to continue doing this work together um, so thank you to UCI, our community, to this space here allows us to share pieces of ourselves and to be seen and to be heard. And I just want to thank everybody who took time out of the day to be here. I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. Let me stop sharing. And then I hope I've left enough time for questions. Yes. All right, everybody. We have uh, everybody loves Netta and <laughs> Netta's showing the love and spreading the love back. So really appreciate that. Let's give up a round of applause for Netta.
you want to do your emojis, that's that's good too. I love you. And I think our we're gonna to try to do the uh, raise your hand through the. You can hit the reactions and then raise your hand that way if you have a question. And I see David has the very first question of the day. So David, go ahead. Hi, Nada. Hi, David. Good to Hi. see you. Great to see you. Great to see you. Really lovely um, presentation. Um, yeah, I, I I understand what you're trying to convey, and it's sort of a uh, open heart and care and concern for other people. Uh, as far as marrying that up or matching that up with the university, where do you want to take your career uh, so that you can bring some of your values into your work and the positions that uh, are ahead of you? I appreciate the question, David. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I hope to grow and, and add value. I, I don't think that I've ever said this is my next step. Um, I reluctantly applied for this position. I'm so glad I did, by the way. Um, for me, I've Throughout my career, I've always thought about whatever job you're doing, do that job well, and then the doors and opportunities open for you. Um, not saying that I don't have a vision. Of course, I want to stay with the university. I want to move up. I want to you know, impact policies and change, yes, but it also not something that takes me too far away from the students because that piece, I always sit with that when I talk with my mentors, I'm like, well, if you want to impact change, you got to get up there. And, and I'm like, yeah, but I can impact real change right here, right now. Um, so you know, to imperfectly answer your question, it's not like I'm eyeing a specific role on campus, but I, I would want to stay within the campus and add that value elsewhere. Um, I think I come with a lot of different tools in my toolbox, so it's not definitive, but I think that, um, you know, really being able to, like in a, in a pipe dream or what I do on the side, like I I love doing the leadership training, right? The actual work that allows us to show up with empathy and to do this work. And, you know, I mean, sometimes people fear feedback, but if you can do it in a loving way. So I think for the, the long-winded answer is I'm open to all possibilities as long as it's for the um, highest good. You know, I always say when I'm thinking about my neck, it's this or something better. Right. So and this is pretty amazing. So that next thing needs to be really like that unicorn rainbow. Right. Um, because th what I'm currently doing fills so many cups. But what I would love to see my pipe dream is having a sage center on campus. Why am I whispering? Let me say it louder. Let's get a sage center on campus anyways. But yes. Now that we have a uh, I think a question in the chat from Behrouz, I think it's a. Uh, where, where is SAGE located? And may, it was missed, I think. And so maybe you can share a little bit of that. I mean, obviously it's not located on camp. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, um, so our offices for the Center for Educational Partnerships, we are in Research Park. Um, however, pre-pandemic, you always saw myself and Ceci on campus, um, either at the Career Center or the Graduate Postdoc Resource Center. I hope I said that right. Um, you know, the, these hubs where we would meet our students, do the work. Um, so SAGE is in Center for Educational Partnerships in Research Park. Our classroom, our student, you know, meetings, our events would happen on campus. Um, and yeah, thank you. Great. And I think somebody dropped it. Irene dropped it in the chat as well. So thank oh, you. Irene. I love Irene. So good to see you. And look at Lily manifest. Oh, I, I, am I able to save these chats so I can come back to them? I, this is incredible. I love you all for being here. Thank you. I think we are able to do that. All right. Other questions. If you have a question, feel free to raise your little chat hand or. All right, Sandra. Neta, great presentation. Anytime I get to, to see you and take in your light is, is a great day. So thank you for sharing that with us. I also wanted to thank you for bringing up that toxic positivity. Because um, I think especially in this time of isolation, um, working, trying to be accountable for what we do, it becomes overwhelming. The fact that we can actually open up that dialogue with one another and say that we don't, you know, it's, yes, we always want to be mindful, but to be able to be vulnerable and talk to a colleague about, hey, I, I'm struggling a little bit, and to have that, that um, trust with someone is so important. So I just want to thank you so much for bringing that up, because I think we, we need to hear it, and we need to allow ourselves to be kind to ourselves and um, be open and honest about that, because that's how we heal. 
Thank you for, for that comment, Sandra. And anytime I get to share space with you, my whole day gets better. So um, I have a lot of love and respect and admiration for you as well. I think that um, toxic positivity uh, is really poisoning us right now, right? I think it's, I, I walk around being like, it's okay to not be okay. And for workspace, I think psychological safety is so important for people to be able to do their best work. Um, if I don't feel safe, how could I possibly show up? And I don't mean vulnerable or authenticity for me to walk around, but listen to all my problems. Like that's not authenticity and that's not vulnerability, but the ability to just come out and say like, I'm not okay, or I don't have the answers. Um, you know, some, some folks in the audience know last year between October and December, I felt like life just knocked the wind out of me again and again. And just when I came up for air, it knocked me back down. And it, when I had to call out my tribe and my loved ones, it, it was the ability to be able to trust them and say, I I'm not okay. Whether that was at work or at home, whatever the case was. And so, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of not pretending that's for sure, but it doesn't give us a license to walk around and treat other people like crap just because I'm going through a lot of stuff. No, that's not what that means either. But yeah. Is there another question in here? Yeah, we're getting some in the chat. So I guess I'll just go ahead and read them out uh, from Netta fan, Elsa. Netta, what is your favorite thing to do to fill your tank? Oh, to film so many things. Um, share. Okay. I love sunsets. I was going to have Ramin talk about my sunsets. You can always find me in Laguna beach. Um, even though I live all the way out here, I will, if I could, I drive down to Laguna beach almost every day to either catch the sunset, put my feet in the sand. Laguna is like my happy place. Um, that fills my cup. Um, I think just connecting with my loved ones, sharing stories, um, Earlier before we had hopped on, I was talking about what a space nerd I am. Like I, I will, I, I follow the James Webb's telescope. I'm waiting to get all those images. Like I love all things universe related. So um, tapping into those things and things that aren't just work related that help me be curious to remember like in this big, beautiful universe, I'm like such an insignificant dot, right? So like, what am I doing with my time here? Does this stuff really actually matter? Um, so love matters, but um the other thing is music, like music fills my cup and my tank. So thank you for that question. All right, great. I think Daniel has a question. Can you talk more about making the right choice despite it being the most difficult one? Oh, well, nobody ever said doing the right thing is, is um, the easy thing, right? Um, I would say that um, I think if you get still enough and you get quiet enough and you actually listen to your inner wisdom, that will lead you to the right path. Um, I think that we're so busy getting outside confirmation about, is this the right path? Should I do this career? Should I marry this person? Should I do this? Or whatever the question is for you to think this is the right choice. I think if you can get quiet, if you have a trusted source to be able to reflect that, like once I come to a decision. I have my trusted inner circle that I'm like, am I on, am I on track? Is this a stupid idea? Right. It's like, it's, it's doing that. But before I seek out, I, I go inward because a lot of times, you know, what's right, you know what to do, but we put our power in asking permission of somebody else or someone else says, yeah, you should do that. And like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that now. Right. But, um, so I hope that answers your question, Daniel. Like it's, it's, it's really about tap back into that inner guidance, right? All right. Um, got another question from Jesse. How do you define toxic positivity? Oh yeah. Do we have another hour? Um, you know, it's, it's the, Anything that you see on social media, <laughs> this notion of everything is perfect, everything's curated. I'm, you know, I'm doing all the things, and this is my best life. Do you have a side hustle? You don't have a side hustle. I have three side hustles. Like, what are we comparing ourselves to? Right. So I think toxic positivity takes many forms. It's not just pretending we're okay and saying everything is great. I can still have hope. I can still be positive and tell you, man, this shit sucks, right? Like it name it by naming it doesn't take away how, um, how much power we're giving it. So to me, toxic positivity is this notion of anything more than you are right now in this moment without doing anything else. You don't need to be anymore. 
Who are we listening to? Toxic. It's toxic to your well being. It's toxic to your day. Um, but I think there's a lot of that going on. And, and I, my top five strengths, y'all, my top strength is positivity. I, I mean, I live, I don't think I could have gone through my life without my, my, my strengths, right? Which I, positivity, woo, empathy, hello, empathy. Am I a counselor? Yes, I am. Adaptability and then maximizer. Like if I don't live my strengths, I don't know what I'm doing, which is probably why I drank that Kool-Aid so long ago, but there's always a shadow side, right? You can't walk around pretending everything is okay when over here behind the scene, everything is falling apart, right? Like you have to be able to tell the truth. You don't need to tell everything to everybody, but it's okay to not be okay. That's for sure. I hope that answers your question, Jesse. All right, we are getting a little bit close to winding down. I do wanna remind folks that we will have a survey that will be sent to you, I believe. And sometimes we drop it in the chat as well. Uh, and those surveys really are very important to us. It, it, you all identify the speakers like Netta. Um, you all give us feedback that we can improve the, the program and the workshops. And as a reminder, you can see any of the past uh, speakers on the website, the What Matters to Me and Why website. And as mentioned earlier, we have some speakers coming up, um, um, even one tomorrow night in the alumni series. So take a look at that. Uh, uh, that'll be a Zoom presentation as well. Uh, from a graduate of uh, 2009, Maimuna Hussein Katan. Uh, and so uh, take a look at that one as well. All right, let's see. We got still, we could probably squeeze in one more question if there is one. I love it. And while someone is thinking about the question, something that just came to me that I wanted to share about building your tribe and finding people who lift you. Um, and and Ramin, you're more of a basketball person than I am. But a few years ago, UCLA was playing a game. And one of the players was walking down and had his head low and a teammate um, came up and lifted his head immediately. He lifted his head and put his hand on his heart. And why do I feel like the guy's name was hands? I don't remember, but it's, it's just like that, that person has the awareness of like, it's that significant, significant moment where you can identify and have the emotional intelligence that someone else is suffering, that you can provide that imp like inspiration that you can help correct it. And I feel like that's real leadership, right? You need that at every level. It has nothing to do with your title. It has nothing to do with any of that. So um, if you haven't said, you know what I'm talking about, Ramin? Was it UCLA, right? I think you're right, actually. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Yeah, I, I could have used it this weekend when my Dallas Cowboys lost because I was suffering and I'm still suffering. Yeah. Well, here, I, I will lift your chin up, um, Ramin. Oh, Katie Russo, Katie Russo. Um, she put the uh, UCLA teammate. It's there. Yeah, you were right. Meta, it's yeah, it's Jalen Hands. You were right. Thank you oh, very I much. Love it. Basketball knowledge in the, in the house. In the house. My brother would be proud. My brother would be proud. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I see yeah. your brother clapping. All right. Oh, yay. Good. Oh, there's my brother, everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Uh, if there are no more questions, then we will sign out. But once again, if you all can give up some emojis for Netta and the great speech, and hopefully you can take from this and, and spread the love around not only UCI, but our, our communities all across and, and beyond UCI. So thank you, Netta, for sharing your story with the thank group you. today. Again, please take a look at the website and future uh, programs and, and do fill out those surveys when you come across them. So Thank you again for being a great audience today. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I, I appreciate it. I wish I could respond to every single comment here, but know that I'm, I'm going to take the time and, and read it. You know, it's, it means a lot to me that you're all here and that you took time out of your busy days to be here and share this space. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you. Can we do one more heart emoji for Netta? She loves hearts. I love love. I love love. You know what, can I, I want you to know in class, I, on Fridays, sometimes I drink my, my tea. And if you haven't had your Yogi tea, um, it, the super antioxidant green tea comes with it, like messages. I'm going to read you what the message was this morning. And I almost cried before I came on, but it says lift up others with your peaceful presence. So signs are everywhere. Y'all just pay attention. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.